In this video, we will look at how the hydrogen bomb Tsar Bomba works. Tsar Bomba is a second-generation nuclear bomb made by the Soviet Union in 1961. This is a type of nuclear bomb called hydrogen or thermonuclear bomb. It is called a hydrogen bomb because of the deuterium or hydrogen-2 and tritium or hydrogen-3 used in it. This is how huge it is compared to a person. It has a length of 8 meters and a mass of 27,000 kilograms. It is larger and heavier than the fat man, which has a mass of 4,670 kilograms only. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any blueprint of the Tsar Bomba. But because it is a hydrogen bomb, most likely, its interior looks like this. This is the usual design of a hydrogen bomb. It has a primary stage and a secondary stage. The primary stage can be a pure fission, just like the Fat Man bomb, or it can also be a boosted fission like this one. A boosted primary stage is made up of different spheres. This is the faster explosive, an explosive commonly used in grenades. This is a slower explosive, uranium-238 tamper, vacuum. This means that it has no content. We only put color in it to make it visible. Plutonium-239 or uranium-235 pit, the fission fuel to make the explosion of the primary stage greater. This pit is hollow at its center as this is where the hydrogen-2 and hydrogen-3 gas mixture is injected from this reservoir. This serves as a booster of neutrons, hence the term boosted fission. Neutrons are important to make sure that the nuclear chain reaction starts and continues. The primary stage has detonators and are connected to each block, and these detonators are connected to the firing unit. The secondary stage or thermonuclear stage is a cylinder with different layers like the uranium-238 blast shield or pusher tamper, lithium-6 deuteride tritide as the fusion fuel, and plutonium-239 as the spark plug. These two stages are suspended on a polystyrene foam as its support and these are encased in a reflective casing or radiation case that traps the fission energy inside. Let's look at the mechanism of the usual hydrogen bomb design so that it's easier for us to understand the stages of the Tsar Bomba. Let's assume that the bomb has already been dropped from the bomber. Because of its heavy weight, a parachute was attached to its tail to delay its detonation to give time for the bomber to get to a safer distance. When the barometric device detects the designated altitude, which is 4,000 meters from the ground, the firing unit is activated, which sends electrical impulses through the wires going to the electrical detonators. Once the electrical impulses reach the detonators, the faster explosives detonate first, creating shock waves. Then, the shock waves go to the slower explosive. The shock wave then compresses the uranium-238 tamper, and because there is a vacuum, the uranium-238 will hit the uranium-235 or plutonium-239 pit so fast. Because of this, the uranium-235 or plutonium-239 pit is compressed, and because of the intense heat, the nuclear chain reaction begins. In nuclear physics, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion are needed in order for a bomb to generate a very high yield of explosion. Nuclear fission is the splitting of an atom of a chemical element like uranium-235 or plutonium-239. A neutron is needed in order to split it. In splitting uranium or plutonium, two more the same atoms are generated in addition to three neutrons and energy. These new neutrons will then also bombard other uranium or plutonium atoms, hence the term nuclear fission chain reaction. Such a chain reaction will continue until the accumulated energy explodes violently. When the fission starts, 
the pit is injected with deuterium tritium gas mixture from the reservoir. Because of the intense heat from the fission of plutonium or uranium, the deuterium and tritium undergo fusion. But it's just a small fusion. The neutrons generated from this fusion will add to the occurring nuclear fission chain reaction. The detonation of the primary stage will emit intense heat, X-rays, neutrons that will cause so much pressure inside, especially that it is inside this radiation casing that traps the energy inside. The polystyrene foam will get irradiated and turn into plasma, adding more pressure. After that, the pressure will then go to the secondary stage. This pressure will compress the uranium-238 pusher tamper, therefore also compressing and making denser the lithium-6 deuteride and the plutonium-239 spark plug inside. Because of the intense heat and so much pressure, the plutonium-239 undergoes fission chain reaction, therefore generating many neutrons. Then the neutrons generated from the primary stage fission and from the plutonium-239 spark plug fission then go to the lithium-6 deuteride tritide. When lithium-6 deuteride is hit with a neutron, it releases tritium and helium. Then, this tritium will fuse with the existing deuterium inside the lithium-6 deuteride. Like what's mentioned earlier, this fusion of deuterium and tritium generates many neutrons, which will add to the neutrons from the primary stage fission. This fusion will continue until the accumulated energy explodes violently. This uranium tamper pusher will also undergo nuclear fission, which will add about 50% to the total explosion yield of Tsar Bomba. The fireball of the Tsar Bomba that was tested went up to 8 kilometers wide. The thermal pulse reached up to 270 kilometers, and the shockwave destroyed up to 700 to 900 kilometers. In comparison, the fat man's damage was only 2 km radius. Now, experts have different theories about the design of the Tsar Bomba. One speculation is that it had one primary stage, two smaller secondary stages, and in the middle is a larger tertiary stage. The other speculation is that it had two primary stages and one large secondary stage. And the other speculation is that it had one primary stage, one secondary stage, and one larger tertiary stage. Analysts stated that the Tsar Bomba even had more than one tertiary stages, that is why it generated 50 megatons or 50 million tons of explosive force, while the Fat Man only generated 21 kilotons or 21,000 tons only. In fact, the Tsar Bomba could have reached 100 megatons of explosive force. The reason why it only reached 50 megatons is because they replaced the uranium-238 tamper with lead because of the too much nuclear fallout of a 100 megaton nuclear detonation. And this is how a hydrogen bomb like Tsar Bomba works. What do you think is the design of the Tsar Bomba? <laughs>